yeah. So let me just help you kind of um, clarify that so they can get a better grasp. So, so what they're finding out is um, there's there's clients out there that didn't agree to appointment, but they're they're shopping around and they're just not certain of a few things, such as you know what they're qualified for, um, what type of property they're looking for. They want to build a house versus buying a turn, turnkey property. Um, they're not sure about location, so you know, rather than just putting them on a drip and a and a callback task, you know, how do we how do we get in front of them? Uh, you know, to be that that agent of choice, you know, for a second opinion or whatever the case may be. So, so you know, today's topic, you know, I want to talk about that. You know what what would you guys do number one and then let's let's create kind of a a, a a a strategy so when we come across those type of people and they decline an appointment but they're they're in the market they didn't say no they're not in the market they just declined an appointment okay and obviously i don't want to just put them on ice and put them on automations i want to take it another step further so i want to get some feedback on what you guys um would have in mind to do in, in a situation like that. So I got something right away before you guys can add in. Uh, whenever I get a lot of those, I don't knows in a conversation, I know that they are at generally the, like the dream phase or the dream stage, right? They're dreaming and fantasizing about, you know, this home. They haven't really, other than logging in online on their spare time on their mobile and like looking at homes for sale, they don't really have an idea of where or what or how much, or they don't even have a concept of how much it's going to cost, let alone the process involved. So what I do to establish where they are in that dream stage, whether or not they're dreaming about some fantasy in 10 years from now and don't have a dollar in the bank, or they're dreaming about something they're going to achieve after they're married in 18 months from now. There's for me, a very simple way to identify where they are in that dream stage because they're not in that actively looking stage or that research stage or that gathering information stage yet. So the easiest way is dollars in the bank. <laughs> like you can be dreaming about a house in 15 years from now and you're dreaming because you got zero dollars in the bank. As a matter of fact, you got $15,000 worth of credit card debt. You're dreaming. So rather than be like, what area, I don't know my budget, I don't know the area, I don't know what type of home, no problem, no problem, you know what, sounds like you're just at the very, very, very early stages of getting an idea of, you know, you want to become a homeowner, a homeowner, that's perfectly fine, you know, have you started putting money in your bank account and saving towards a down payment or a deposit? No, okay, fair enough, answers your question. Yes, I have. Okay, cool. And are you looking to save up like 5%? Do you have a certain amount that you've saved up so far? Because based off of what you've saved up so far, I can automatically tell you based off of your deposit, how much you're going to be eligible for just based off your deposit. Now, obviously, other things like income and financial status and, and, and residence and all those other things play a factor. But if you don't even have $5,000 in the bank account, I as a realtor know where you are in that dream stage. Now, if you're like, yeah, I got about 50 grand saved up. And I'm like, oh, great. So that would be 10% down on a $500,000 home. I reverse everything back, 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 back. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And you're constantly fishing for these questions and trying to extract information. Cool. No problem. You don't know what you're approved for. So how much money do you have saved up for a down payment on the house? It doesn't get as more matter of fact and simple as that. If they don't have any money saved up, you know the answer to the question. 10000 25000 $50,000, $200,000. Gauge, gauge that off of there and, and set up, I guess, your, your follow-up or, or, or system after that. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. So let me kind of clarify that too. I kind of threw a different bunch of scenarios in the same bucket um, because one of the scenarios uh, be more specific was they are ready to do something, 
but they're talking to other agents, right? And so I kind of threw that in the same bucket as what you're referring to. So let me kind of separate those because you're right. The, 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 looker, the lookers who, um, you know, don't know what their budget is and don't know where they're going in the beginning stages. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So let me separate that from a real life scenario where, um, where they, they, they talk to this person, they are talking to other agents, but they didn't want to have an appointment, right? So they're active and they're looking, right? So, so let me just kind of narrow on that one because as far as what you just said, you're absolutely right for the beginning stages. Um, so for that one, what should we do? Hey, yeah, I'm looking, I'm shopping around. Okay, great. That's exactly why you should meet one of our area specialists. You know, are you free today at two o'clock tomorrow? Five? Yeah, I don't want another appointment, right? You want to get off the phone. Okay, right. so that's, you know, I, I love it. So uh, it's funny because I was talking to Saharla today and uh, she's like, yeah, you and Gary are, are great together on the on, on these calls. And I'm like, it's just, that's strange because we have pretty strong dominant personality types, but you and I do groove t- together well, <laughs> which is rare for two Ds, right? Um, right. So, so, you know what, like, on top of that, like, yeah, you know what? They're not, they've been talking to a lot of other agents because they've registered on a lot of other sites. We know that this is happening. We've talked about this time and time again. We know that this is happening. Now, the reason why they don't want to meet with other agents is because these agents are just going to try and, and, and sell their services. But if you flip the script and you're like, so Gary, listen to me. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, you're probably getting bombarded by a lot of other real estate agents. And it's probably starting to get a little bit frustrating and irritating. Does that sound legit, right? And they're like, yeah, it kind of is. Cool. Well, I just got a couple of quick questions for you. Number one is, do you plan on using a real estate agent whenever that time is right for you? Like, do you plan on using that? The answer is going to be yes. If it's no, then great. Okay, see you later. That's weird that you don't plan on doing that. Good luck. Right. Um, shit. But if they're like, yes, I guess I do. Okay, cool. Listen, like it's in your best interest to start interviewing real estate agents. It could be me or it could be 10 other people, but it's in your best interest to start interviewing agents right now and have them do the homework for you. It's going to save you time. You can start by interviewing me right now, just like I'll interview you. I don't work with every client and you shouldn't work with every agent. Right. Okay. So, so say, so. So say some of that was said by the ISA, because this is kind of, uh, I guess this is kind of turned into, is this going to be uh, something we just throw back into the, the, the nurture status, or do we try to get a strong agent on the phone to connect and turn this into an opportunity? That's kind of the direction I was going. So say, so like Ann and Alicia, they said those things, but they're like, yeah, we're not ready to meet with another agent um, right now, but we are shopping. Right. And we, we are talking to a couple other agents, but we're just too busy, whatever the case may be. You know, so, hey, so they just make notes, you know, call back in two weeks, call back in a week, call back in a day. Or do they say, hey, I'm all and this is kind of a group conversation because, you know, the way my mind is working is how do we maximize that opportunity? Although it's not appointment, but we know it's business that's out there. So did they say, hey, Topeka, I got someone that's looking in this area. Um, you know, they are talking to other agents. And they're open to speaking with other agents and get a second opinion, but they didn't want to make an appointment with me. Okay. So how do we approach that? So what there's, there's a couple of things that we can do there. Uh, for one is I would find out if they are what we call, you know, excuse my language, but are they a realtor slut? Are they just going to be out there and work with everybody all the time? Cause that's not my client. I don't want to work with somebody like that. I don't want, I don't want to be one of those cabs where I'm the guy that calls six different cab companies and goes with the first one that shows up. I'm not interested in, in, in that business. Right. So I understand you've talked to a lot of other real estate agents. Like that's, that's fine. Um, so what I can do, uh, because it seems like you don't or are not ready to start that process of, of working with a real estate agent, I can send you over an interview guide So that when you are ready for that process, these are some of the questions you absolutely need to ask these real estate agents as they are going to be the ones that are helping you with the biggest investment of your life. I'll send you over the document of the questions that are must ask when interviewing real estate agents. 
So right there, you're going to be different. You're actually giving them something of value. You're not saying hire me. You're saying here's how to start interviewing okay. agents. But, okay, let's. Okay, so so here's an important detail right here. This is what I'm trying to get to. So I'm trying to guide you with our conversation. <laughs> Are you speaking from an agent perspective or from an ISA perspective? Uh, so, okay. So it can be both. So, you know what, I'm the client care representative. So, you know what, we've talked to a lot of people in the situation that you're in right now. Um, so what we can do is we can send you over an interview guide so that when you are ready to start interviewing real estate agents, I definitely recommend that process sooner rather than later, but that's completely up to you. At least now you'll have a format and the right questions to ask to start to eliminate some of those bad agents, because let me tell you, there are a lot of them out there. Okay. So I, I agree with you on that. Now here's where I'm, I'm trying to lead the mindset of, of our team is, is that something that the ISA is going to keep pounding on or do we get, get it into a strong agent to where they can, you know, hey, I understand you talked to our client care services, Alicia. She said that, you know, you are looking for a house. You're open to, uh, you know, second opinions. And you also said that you're busy. Um, you know, I understand that you're very busy. You know, so am I. However, I would reach out to you, um, ABC, right? And have the, the agent make that phone call and start making connection right away. So now there's no right or wrong answer this is just what we do in the mornings like okay here's a scenario how do we maximize that opportunity right and so in my opinion i would rather see the agents kind of step in on that and just make that one phone call and from that one phone call we could say hey yeah it's too premature throw it back in the nurture bucket or hey i answered some great questions i'm building rapport let me take over from here right so what do we have to lose so anyway, feedback on that. Jared, Lauren, I see you raise your hand. Um, yeah. Um, all I wanted to say was that uh, in terms of the, the script that Jared laid out, I think that's great to start that from the ISA process and say, there are a lot of crappy agents out there, want to make sure you get hooked up with a good one. We only work with top quality professionals on our team that have experience. So it's leading them into a pre-sell of and framing of the people that we work with are top notch. Edify. Exactly, it's edifying us. So that's a great way. And then Gary, the second step would be us introducing ourselves, but already for us to say, I'm great, I have experience. It's not as powerful as somebody else introducing it that way. So um, both levels, it comes at it from both sides. That's all I'm saying. Not, yeah. not and, 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 like, and like I said, this isn't about um, all I'm trying to do is from here out, we're creating a system where, OK, the, the ISA is going to say this. Here's an opportunity. It's not an appointment. It's going to be we set it up for you. Let's see if we can do something with it. If we can't, we'll put it back in nurture. If we can. Great. Right. So. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. And and I think the, the important thing that you just mentioned there, which is sort of a, a tangent, is that it's very important to be clear when um, we're being set up for something, what we're being set up for in order to get in touch with somebody. What are they expecting? What are they expecting to hear from us? What point of value are they expecting to get? Is it an appointment? Is it something that's leading to getting together because they need a home value? Or is it just they ha they are considering their options. They have well, a cousin that's well, a realtor. So, so this is a, this is where I'm coming from, and it's like if the ISA. So right. So this is kind of a tag team, right? So when I used to sell cars years ago, um, we had a closer. I very rarely use a closer because I pretty much can close a deal by myself. But I get to a certain point, then I do a handoff to a closer, right? And then we play ping pong back and forth, right? So on the first call, initial call. Traditionally, in all the systems I work for, that would be throw back in the bucket and nurture it, right? Because it's not really primed up to be an appointment. And there's some there's some indicators, meaning like they're not really ready. They're not ripe yet, right? So we're pick, we're kind of picking, you know, uh, fruit prematurely, right? But what we're trying to do is this is a very competitive market, as we know. I was on a coaching call the other day and uh, Trent was up against a listing appointment. This, the, 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 the listing agent or the agent that was going after this listing showed up with five people. So this is what you guys are up against. He showed up with five people. It was him, a lender, like a showing agent, like a TC person and, and somebody else. 
five deep to a listing appointment. Now, how many listing appointments are they going to go to where they're kind of not wasting that much people's time, but look at the energies put into those listing appointments. So that, that tells me when you're spending five people's time going to a listing appointment, it's a very competitive market, right? So how do we be even more competitive and how do we even get in it before those five people are in it, right? To where we can maximize this opportunity. So uh, with that being said, it might be premature. So I look at it as an agent saying, hey, you know, uh, we, we set up the agent, like you said, Lauren, which I think is great. Hey, you know, I say, you know, here's a questionnaire I want to send you. Um, you know, our, we have area specialists, so they're edifying the agent. We're not setting an appointment. But then the agent calls and said, hey, you know, uh, we have a morning huddle every morning or whatever the case, you know, however you kind of present it. And uh, one of our client care services uh, conveyed to me that, hey, you're still in a looking phase and you're and you're looking, you know, and you're talking to other agents. You're not ready for appointment, but I just thought I'd reach out and call because I am the area specialist here and I just want to kind of get some more information for you. So when you are ready, whatever that script is, pry for information to start building that relationship, and that rapport. This is, oh, that's what you want to do. Oh, this is what I can do for you. Now you match and mirror the value that the ISA could get, right? And then if that doesn't happen, then hit it back to the ISA. Hey, I asked this person all the right questions. They didn't want to respond. They're not ready. Ping it back. Right, and we'll put it back. I, I got, I got a little boop. I got an idea uh, that popped into mind. So, um, you know, if these dreamers, dream stage people, various, various deposit amounts in their bank account of the dream stage, what we established earlier, um, they're brushing off the ISAs and they're saying, "I don't want to meet with an agent." So it's like. Well, let's send you over this interview guide. We only work with a select top rated agents in this, and we have a vetting whatever process you edify, right? So there's a little step there. Give them some information about when and how to interview. But then also, um, you know, I understand that you don't want to be speaking with an agent one on one, right? Because that's like, that's like, that's like, oh, are they going to be asking me this? Like, I don't value that because I don't want to answer their questions. And like, I don't even know what I want yet. And blah, 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 blah. There's no benefit for me because I don't even know what I want. Why would I want to meet with somebody that I don't even know anything about? Right. I'm still at the preliminary stages as me as a buyer. Like that makes no sense. I'm going to say no to meeting with that agent all day long until I'm kind of like, okay, yeah, I guess I'll listen to what the agent has to say. Now, if they're brushing us off, why not, again, send that interview guide, edify, but then also have a set time in the week where, hey, listen, you know what? We do first-time buyer seminars, orientations. It's 12 minutes long, and it's on Wednesdays at 7.30. You know, it's every Wednesday. So what, 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 why don't I do this? Why don't I send you the Eventbrite link? Okay. It's open discussion. It's not going to be you asking questions, but we are going to be covering, or sorry, the agent expert in this area is going to be covering common questions like securing deposit amounts, interest rates, state of the market, how to avoid pitfalls and inspections, the top five things to worry about when looking for a home at the, at the beginning of the process. Now you can choose to log in on this Wednesday at seven 30. It's on this event, right? Link. You can log in and log out whenever you want. It's completely open and up and open to you. So now we can actually get registration. We can see who logs in and now the agent, it can even be pre-recorded by all means. You know what I'm saying? Like we can even pre-record that and run that every Wednesday at 730 and see how many people we can push into that funnel. And then we're giving them value and then we can feed up. Hey, Jason, I saw that you registered for that Eventbrite link, the five pitfalls to avoid as a first time buyer. What did you think about that? How was the agent? How was the presenter? Is that some, did they have the qualities that you would see when interviewing a real estate agent, then we can have a follow-up questionnaire and that is going to set us aside from the competition in the market. What do you guys think about that? I love that. I think that's fantastic. It also makes everything uniform in terms of the experience. And then you can reach out when people have questions, you know, if there's a Q and a section, I saw that you had questions. 
I'm the guy in your area wanted to introduce myself since I had a chance to connect yet, if or if we had whatever. Um, and it's an, another reason to continue the conversation. You get your face on there. You got a good face, man. Well, let's use that. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know, so first, first, so two parts to this so far. First, number one, we need the questionnaire, you know, so the ISAs can afford that. And then number two, we need to create this funnel of uh, this recording, um, which is, you know, obviously a solution, right? It's, it's, it's um, what, 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 what I'm trying to do and when I'm, how I'm really looking at this is how can we um, take jabs at the business um, even if it's early, you know, how do we ask for the business or how do we get involved with the business? Um, it's kind of like door knocking, you know, you door knock, you know, I got a guy that comes around the neighborhood. Um, and I mean, I, I asked him to get into real estate cause he's really good. And he was selling, um, uh, 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 HVAC systems and stuff. And, and I said, no, I'm not really interested, but Hey, I'm busy, you know, check with me, you know, maybe in the, uh, you know, a couple months because I'll, I'm looking into getting like I have, I don't have air conditioned, right? And so he stopped by like three weeks later. He was like, "Hey, you know, I was in the neighborhood. I got some other clients here, and I just want to stop by. I, I had you down for you know, you know, two months. You know, I think in June, blah, blah blah. But I'm just doing a pop by to see if anything changed or if, if I can answer any more questions, right? So even though I told him no." come back a few months, he still came in and made that touch, right? And so he's being proactive. So, so these are type of things I think which makes a strong sales team is you're not just putting out a task list for two weeks, for three weeks, for you know three months. What can we do to keep hitting them you know, for the business? And, and this is what I'm trying to create right now, which um, I think is awesome, right? Because all they can do is say, no. And then we keep incubating them. So there's there's another there's another opt in. You know, at the end of this this kind of incubation process, right? We're doing these other things, so we're incubating them. But then there's another call to action. Hey, listen, you know what? Uh, let's follow up. You went to this event, right? Link. There's a lot of things we need to do. Yes, it's a 12 to 15 minute pre recorded um, uh, buyer presentation off of X, Y, and Z, right? That, that stuff is simple. We can do that. We already have the knowledge in here. It's about creating that process. But now, as Gary said, what do we do to ensure that we are not dropping the ball over a long period of time? Because it does come down to timing. The, that message needs to be delivered at the right time when they are thinking about taking that next step. We've already done these things to position ourselves, but if we don't continue to tap them on the shoulder frequently enough, and they are thinking about something, they could be registering on another site. And it just so happens that that agent calls at the right time, at the time that they're thinking about it and gets that, gets that lead or gets that deal or, or, or presents a value proposition, right? Despite all of our efforts. So how do we ensure that and create another layer? The other layer is going to be an opt-in to a subscription. Uh, so like, okay, great. So you know what? How did you like that, that, uh, this, what were the takeaways? How was the presenter? Um, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to add you to our monthly advisory list. So once a month, we're going to send you a snapshot of the market watch report. Is it okay to add you to our email list of subscribers? Would you see that as value? So now they've opted in. They're like, yeah, okay, sure. Send me that market watch report every month. Then we can put a tag on them and say they have said that they would like and appreciate us to send them updates once a month. After they've done this, we've sent them that. They are part of the uh, webinar, uh, the event, right? Done the follow-up. And now they're like, sounds great. Send me those newsletters. What we're creating now is we're creating a strong and growing list of email subscribers. That's great. Yeah, and, and 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 we're starting to build a relationship in the beginning stages and a strong relationship, right? So it's kind of like, you know, we want people to to kind of lean on us to be their their uh, top of mind for information, which that information is going to lead to, you know, clients and clients into transactions, right? So that's what I wanted to talk about today. And if Jared, if you want to kind of jump in with some scripts and some other stuff, but I want to leave it with this. So the ISAs, 
they watched Richard's video. I don't know if you guys seen that video when we did the 2% on, on Monday, but you know, I had some takeaways in that because Richard has a, a really good way of packaging things. And, and he said, there's two types of motivations. And I really love this, right? There's two types of motivations. One is to move towards pleasure. And two is to move away from pain, right? Yeah. So that's why we talk about pain points, right? We talk about pain points. We need to know pain points, but we also got to look at and focus on, and this is kind of my interpretation. He didn't really say this. Maybe you did focus on the pleasure. Like, you know, why are you moving to Seattle? Right. How soon you need to be there? I'm moving to Seattle, you know, uh, because I like the city and I'm getting a job there, you know, and then asking all those questions, emotional questions about, um, well, you moved to Seattle because you love shopping, you love the city life, you love the restaurants, you know, what would that look like if we got you into Seattle? you know, in, in 30 days or 60 days, right? Using that emotion for leverage, right? That's time and motivation, right? And so um, so we're really, on the ISA behalf, we're really going to really focus on the two types of motivations, right? And then really dig deep into the motivation and timing. And then for the handoff with the notes that we put in the, the, the in sync and stuff, I really want the agents to really ride on that emotion too. And to ask those questions, just like we did, Lauren, like when we were doing uh, agent attraction, it was like, you know, what would 12 more listings a year do for you? Right. Those are those emotional questions. Like you just paint a vision for them. You know, what would, you know, living by that lake where you can go fishing every morning when you wanted to, what would that do for your peace of mind? Right. And so, that's the type of intel I want to try to extract from these people like as soon as possible so we can start feeding and building on that emotion. Okay. So that's just kind of my train of thought. I just want to throw that out there. Cool. Can I add something before I forget it? Cause I wanted to add something in a couple yeah, of steps. Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of, uh, again, the ISA is making the intro or talking about, I'll set you up with a realtor. It's important, I think, to create a, a personal connection. So it's not so, um, how do I say it? Like rigid and, and robotic. I'm going to set you up with the area specialist, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so a personal connection would be something like, uh, I'll just use myself as an example. Um, oh, you're moving to Innisfil. Oh, you're so lucky. You know, Lauren Cooper's the, the agent in that area. And everybody that I've talked to that's worked with him has been so happy because he's like, you know, uh, he's like that no pressure kind of guy just sort of helps you along works, in, you know, whatever it is, it's a more casual conversation. And you're like, wow, you're really lucky that Lauren's the guy in that area or whoever it is for whatever area. Um, it's just a way to talk them up and, and say, again, from you, a third source, and you're talking about somebody else. Everybody I've talked to that he's worked with has been so happy. So, you so know, that I creates that relationship and warmth. Right. So I'm going to take a step further in, in, in my notes here because um, you nailed it. You, you just you just uh, reminded me to look at this. I have this written down um, for introductions. It's kind of like, you know, when we introduce people um, like before they speak on a Zoom call or, you know, whatever the case may be. I mean, how cool would it be for everybody like for the ISAs that have a bio, just kind of bullet points. And like you said, a little bit about you, but, you know, Lauren's a great guy. You know, he's also a musician. You know, I heard some of his music. I love his music. But anyway, I'll get off of that and I'll just transition back into business, right? Just to kind of give a plug in, because you're right. Just saying, hey, he's an area specialist. Everybody's probably saying that. But if you start building Lauren up to where he's human, right? He has a daughter, you know, yeah. Oh man, last night he just went on a uh, a, a daughter date with with a, you know. Speaking of Lauren, last night I saw on on social media he was out um, with his daughter having a daughter dad date and blah blah blah. I mean, people love that stuff, right? That's why we do newsletters so we can start building those relationships. There's no reason why the ISAs can't, and I'm I'm, I'm speaking to the ISAs right now, can do a one or two line in addition to the area specialist, right? To start building that relationship, right? So. Now, these are things that other, I guarantee you, right? These are things that other teams are not doing, right? I guarantee you nobody's getting set up like that. And so- no, they're, they're so, on a speed, speed to lead golden nugget search. Yep. And we it's that here, same generic here. language that everybody uses. And if we make it more personal, oh, he's got the cutest kids and everybody that works with them loves him. 
you're going to love talking to them. Stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's so easy and personal. It creates yeah, that, they absolutely. They drop their guard. They're not a salesperson. They're a real person. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with 100%. You know, you know sales isn't all uh, psychology, right? And it's going to feel less intrusive. If it's going to be feel personable, they're going to feel like, oh, now I know Lawrence. So I feel obligated to Lauren because he has kids. He, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. So so that's kind of the approach that I want to take now this year for 2023 is really going do the same things we're doing. We're doing a great job. But how can we maximize our efforts and go deeper into it? You know, when we go into a stage, how can we go deeper into that stage to where we can increase our our closing abilities or increase the opportunity to build that relationship faster or increase you know all those opportunities right so anyway so i just want to close out with that and to uh, add on to that real quick gary i think what that does is it creates a personal connection like i said with with whoever you're setting them up with and they're not thinking oh crap i got to deal with a salesperson who's going to try to sell me something and then just not show up for the call or not answer their phone now it's a real person they're just calling to talk to give me information oh all right i have kids they have kids or whatever the connection is um it's a lot i think it'll improve the the show up rate so thank you for that because i wasn't thinking about that i was thinking about for these other opportunities but i think you guys so everyone i would like everyone to kind of send Anne and Alicia some bullet points of who you are, right? Like interesting things. Um, brief and, bios. Yeah, brief, bios. brief bios. But then you guys, when you set a point, they say, oh, that's Lauren's, that's Lauren's area and kind of go in, just, you know, be natural about it. Don't read it like a script. Be natural about, it. oh, this is Lauren. I'm going to set you up with Lauren. Blah, blah, blah. Lauren's a great guy. You love him. You know, blah, 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 blah. Right. Some genuine enthusiasm and passion. Like, oh, you're so lucky. This person, Jim so, Smith, in that area. So, so when we set appointments, I, I want you guys to do that. Right. And then when we do these missed opportunities as well, I want okay. you to do that. OK, so let this yeah. be protocol and see if that increases our show rate as well. OK, yeah. I think that's great. All right. Cool. All right. Well, that's all I had, you guys. So um, you guys can piggyback on that or Jared, you can. I have work. a technical question uh, about the CRM for a sec, if you guys can help me out with that. Yeah, so go when, when I'm going through and, you know, I'm calling uh, some leads and they're like, well, I actually bought uh, last week with my cousin or I'm planning on buying with my cousin. I'm not using anybody else no matter what. Wh where is it? Like, how do I how do I treat that lead in the CRM? So there's there's one way that would be optimal which would be amazing is to play the long game with that lead and play play the game that say hey listen the fact is is that i'm going to go ahead and, and play the game and say that that real estate agent maybe it's their cousin so they have thanksgiving whatever aside from that family member that real estate agent is not going to do a good job at following up with them every single year for the next six years until they're ready to buy a new house on average so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that game and say, oh, congratulations. That's amazing. What area did you buy it in? I bought in Oshawa. Cool. What I can do for you is I can actually set you up on our property spy program, or I'll put you on our neighborhood expert program. What it is, is it's a very simple process where I will put in your email with your new home spin a web around it so every time one of your neighbor's home comes up for sale you can see how much they're selling it for which allows you to watch your investment grow every single year if that's something that would be interesting to you and they're like i've said it before and they're like yeah that sounds pretty cool i'm like cool so now we can put them on a neighborhood expert program we put them on an mls we draw a little web around it where their new address of their purchase is now we know a homeowner is at 123 Main Street and we are going to automatically drip them for the next six years and it probably took 12 minutes of our time to set them up. On top of that, if you want to go a step further, you now have a direct mailer that as you continue to grow this list of people that have now bought new homes, you can send them out a direct mail campaign for a Merry Christmas card. It's gonna cost you $2.50 a year for six years. Do the math on that, right? So that's a perfect situation, uh, Lauren. Now in the actual CRM, you can log in and you can go into their information 
And if they just bought a home and you didn't go the step further and offer them a neighborhood expert program, which allows them to track the return on their investment. investment in their increase in equity over a long period of time and you didn't have that conversation and you just want to update that uh do you want to play on both of those lauren or which one do you want to learn how to do right now yeah no i'm cool with that what what, what i don't know is how to actually tag it so i'm not constantly looking at them as like a lead now yeah. it's it's yeah. like already bought whatever whatever i can sort of market that way sure so um I guess if I go screen share. Yeah, you got it. Dude, your screen looks like mine, your desktop. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I have so many different uh properties and pictures on there because i got to download them upload them into this other it, it's a mess it is a mess okay uh reset password no thank you so click on a lead uh karen 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 why you're karen uh so in here you can go in info and you can actually Go to sold new address, and you can actually put in their new address, which will update their file. You can also put in their anniversary, their birthday as well. And then the system can send out emails and text messages on those dates saying, hey, happy home buyer anniversary. Uh, would you like me to send you over a new market watch report so you can see how much uh, money you've made in equity? Or hey, happy birthday, hope you're enjoying time with your family. You can put that birthday information and where do you get that information? You get it off of your uh, FinTrack, right? Uh, so here, put in their, their new uh, address. You can also- well, not, if, uh, not if it's not your client, you don't get it not, off of FinTrack. Not if it's not your client, correct. So you can also go into uh, activity, do, do, do. edit. House to sell, yes, I believe. Social info, no. Uh, time frame to buy, no. User data, no. Address, so you can put in their address here as well. Um, or can you, you put in the drop down of the time frame to buy? Is there is there something like already purchased or something like that in, in there? Yeah, so there's something in the notes here where you can put uh, the type and you can put missed sale, which is right here because you missed that opportunity. You missed that sale. Uh, it's not dead, um, but you can also move this down to. Why can't I get this off? You can also move this down to sold as well if you wanted to. Uh, or you can put it just as contacted and then put the label on there so that you know not to contact it anymore. Uh, let's see, what do we have on here? Yeah, the missed sale makes sense. You can see that right next to the FU in red, which I love. <laughs> yeah, there's also, there's also, if you do put them on the Neighborhood Expert Program, you can also put them on to Met at House, Seller Plan, Mortgage Labels, Task. Updated notes, coaching callback, top priority, no timeline, and follow up. I think it it has to be labeled as they have a realtor. Well, they don't have a realtor anymore. Oh, number 13, neighborhood expert program. So you can put them here that you put them on the neighborhood expert plan. Now, if you don't do that, um, then you can just move to, you can move them to missed sale. Right. So like they're a missed sale. They've already bought a house with somebody else. That's a missed sale, missed opportunity on to the next. Now, in that conversation, if they're like, yeah, I already bought a house and you're like, oh, OK, uh, have a good day. Bye. 
missed sale. That's a black lead. Put it on the tight, missed sale. If you want to go the step fo forward and you want to create uh, a list of six years from now when they're looking to buy again, then use the neighborhood expert plan label. So you could filter your leads and see how many people you're acquiring to put on this neighborhood expert plan. Every new buyer that you have should be put on this plan. Do, it, does this trigger the system to automatically generate it or is that something that I have to do afterwards? This is just a little tag. Yeah, you're gonna wanna go and take all that information and put it into your matrix. Gotcha. Or, or what you could do is you could use this system as well. Uh, so you could do Karen, you could go update her search. And you could go to location, um, and then you want to draw it on the map here. You could pinpoint their exact location, and then you could draw a circle around it. And now anything that comes up for sale in there, they'll actually send that alert. So do it right from the system. So let's just do it right now. Um, leads, we'll go to reset all. Okay, Navdeep just got off a call with you. Awesome, looks like you just bought a property. And I was like, awesome, where did you buy it? Oh, 123 Main Street, okay, awesome. Uh, congratulations, that's super exciting. You know, what I can do for you, uh, a lot of our clients love this. I know that you're not one of our clients. We didn't have the opportunity to help you in that, but I'll still put you on the program. The program is a neighborhood expert program. What I do is I put in your new home purchase address. I put a parameter around that. And every time one of your neighbor's listing comes up for sale, you get notification about how much they're selling it for. Now, the benefit to you is that you can continue to watch and see how much your homes are selling for around your neighborhood, your neighborhood and watch your equity grow over a longer period of time. Our clients love it. Do you want me to go ahead and set you up on that program? Sure, sounds good, cool. What's your address? One, two, three, Main Street. Okay, great. I'm gonna set you up with that program right now. Is your email address, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna text you over uh, the email address that we have on file. If you can just send me over a thumbs up to make sure we have it spelled correctly and then you're good to go. Again, congratulations on that. Uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. One, two, three main street. I'm going to go on here. I'm going to send a text message text. I'm going to go to template. I'm going to go to first text after, after contact. It's already auto filled for you. Hey, first name. Can you confirm your email address? We have spelled it correctly. Apply yes or no. Boom. Send that. Now I'm going to go into here. I'm going to create a new search. Uh, 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 here, I'm going to type in maybe an address. I don't know if it'll work. No, let's clear all. So I guess on here, what you'll have to do is you'll have to look at that specific area. Let's just use Peterborough because it's right there. Look and see, maybe it's in uh, Collison Heights. Uh, and then you can just draw a custom search around that. Save it. I'm not going to save it because I just erased this person's search. Save it. And then you can call the search neighborhood expert. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, Main Street, whatever that is, right? And then you could even, if you wanted to, generate this link and send it to them and say, hey, this is uh, this is your no, new neighborhood expert search criteria. Um, you'll continue to get identified over a long period of time. You can also opt out anytime you want if you don't want to receive these emails. Um, and then that's it. And then I would go here and I would say contacted. And then I would say, um type and i would or checklist and i would put neighborhood expert or i could even create a new uh unique uh tag for you if you want under the type now these people are going to be dripped every time one of these listings comes up and then what i could also do is i could also set up a reminder 
for let's say like, oh, cool. When do you take possession of your house? October 31st, great. Set a reminder on October 31st to send out a text message to this person congratulating them for the new home purchase. Imagine the surprise when Navdeep gets a text message from you on their home anniversary and not the agent that helped them buy the house. <laughs> now that's funny. <laughs> Derek, good question. You said that we can send a link. So that link stays active all the time when they want to go back on that link or it stays active like usually a week or two weeks time. The link is just for their property search right here. So I can go on yeah. this and I can go to generate link right now, copy yeah. link, and I can send them that via text message right now. Hey, yeah. by the way, thanks for confirming. And then here's your link to what we have identified as your search. Can you confirm that all that criteria is good? Do you want me to change that? So yeah, that link is good. It's just a link back to their... Uh, uh, no, what I was asking, let's say we send them a link because they have just purchased a property. Everybody knows that anybody will stay in that property. Minimum to minimum five years. I'm just keeping that <laughs> the bank, you know, mortgage that they take. What I'm saying, that link that we send them, telling them about the neighborhood expert program, and we created this criteria that how you said, that link stays active if they come back after one week or two weeks to click on that link to access it or... But they don't, they don't up in the system, they're getting new everyday mailer, right? If a new yeah, property is yeah, they, yeah, they don't need to access the link. The link is okay. the link is just it, it's just, just a set okay. criteria just initial, where yeah. they're going to be receiving emails of property emails. alerts every that's time fine. one of their neighbors is selling. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay. That's Lauren, fine. does that answer your questions? Not at all, but I no, I'm kidding. Yeah, it was cool, man. <laughs> well, let's let's try and answer your question then. <laughs> no, no, I was joking. Totally joking. It, it did. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, I was like, oh, shit. I thought I nailed that. <laughs> yeah. The, the only other thing I want to add in there is, you know, if it's before you do a missed sale is, um, hey, you know, congratulations, you know, uh, on your new home purchase. And, you know, you know, it this sucks that we missed that opportunity. But hey, by the way, you know, a lot of our clients right now that they own single family residents, they're seeing how the market is. Have you ever thought about investing, you know, buying another property? You know, so again, typically, maybe that's what we do. What can we do going forward to try to maximize the opportunity? Oh, well, okay. you know what? Gary, on those lines, um, you may even phrase it like, oh, congratulations on buying 123 Main Street. That's awesome. When are you closing on that property? Whatever, whatever. Great. Are you, are you moving into that property or is it an investment? No. And then then you know, oh, I'm moving into that property. Great. Or it's an investment. Awesome. Do you have other investment properties as well? Or are you always absolutely, looking for investment absolutely, opportunity? Absolutely. I love it. Absolutely. I love it. It just makes it more of a natural thing than yeah. a salesy yeah, kind yeah, of like. Absolutely. You know, um, so anyway, so yeah, you nailed it. And that's what we should be, you know, what we should be doing is, you know, how can we ask another good question? You know, what can what can we still offer? Although this person just bought a house, you know, and like you just said, which is a good point is, was that investment property? Or are you moving into that property? You know, because we don't know. Right. And so, no, that's, that's, that's legit. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, I got to oh, run guys, in I five have, minutes. I have a quick question. Yeah. Before you guys leave, I just have a quick question. Does anybody of you knows how to like, handle or or help a lead that's wanting to buy a piece of land for them to build a house on it like they want to know the process of buying a land and, sure that's uh, fine that's yeah. not a problem as long as they have some sort of budget and mm -hmm. area in mind mm -hmm. if they say oh, okay. i just want to buy a piece of land somewhere i don't know how much i want to spend then they're, yeah. they're 99.99% full of crap. But, I you know, see. if you ask better questions and get a little bit deeper into like, are, are they really into this? Have they bought land before? Um, mm -hmm. uh, do they have other properties? Are they planning on building something commercial or something residential uh, mm -hmm. to live on? You know, asking these questions would help um, mm -hmm. to clarify the process. But yeah, it's, it's, it's not that much different. It just mm -hmm. depends on, you know, what it is. You'd ask them, you, are you looking for land that's already serviced, meaning they have, you know, electricity and plumbing and all that, uh -huh, or okay. just raw land, uh, something uh -huh. forested, something cleared. These are different questions that you can ask. Okay. All right. 
Thanks, Thorne. And also another one, going back to the to the second opinion leap, what if it's the other way? Like they already had contract with their agent right now, but they are still willing to like meet with us, like even face to face. Um, I mean, what's it for us? Do we still compete with that agent or? Sorry, say yeah. that again. Yeah, for example, it's the other way. Like they already have contract with their agent, but they are still willing to you know, to have a second opinion with us, even like have to face to face meeting with us. Do we still cater them? Do we do we still no, so, compete so with the agent? There's one, there's one option here, unless you want to live in the darker gray area. We are not able to uh, communicate if they're under contract with another agent. It's a mm -hmm. it's a conflict. Uh, mm -hmm. We can the, we can, buyer buyer agency agreement. I think yeah. you can refer to a buyer we, agency we, agreement. We can get into trouble for that. However, uh, we can say. Okay, cool. You know, uh, we work with a lot of very unique specialized lenders. Uh, have you been pre-approved or would you like a second opinion from one of our specialized lenders? We can get you really good rates. Even though you don't want to work with our real estate agent, you can still work with one of our lenders. If they say yes, we can get on the phone with the lender and say, hey, listen, talk to this, a, talk to this uh, Jane Smith and then say, okay, uh, here's, your, here's your rate. Oh, by the way, we only work with these teams. And then they can re-edify our agents, but we can't actually try and steal that business. But our mortgage broker okay. can. I'll, I'll add into that really quickly. So if they're bringing up to you that they want to speak to somebody else, yeah. then then they're essentially approaching us and it's okay for us to speak to them, but we can't push our way into it. Now, yeah. if, if they say, you know, yeah, I've been working for, with an agent for a while, but I wouldn't mind talking to, to the yeah. person that you're working with. Say, okay, uh, that's great. No problem. How's it been going so far to try to get into, are they not happy? Is that why yeah, they want yeah. to talk to somebody mm -hmm. else? And then that way you'll get a, a, a clearer picture of the situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can also, another question to ask would be, typically we're talking to buyers, right? So mm -hmm. they've been working with somebody for a little while. Are you planning on using the same agent to sell your house that you are to purchase your house? Are they a sales? And then sometimes yes, sometimes no. And that's another way to get in because they may yeah. not be under contract for the right. listing. Yeah, yeah. If you're okay to, you know, if they're only under contract for the listing or the purchase, you can then jump on the other as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Am, am I am, am I there, uh, Jarrett? You think that that's pretty kosher? Yeah. Yeah, you know what, you know, without, you know, talking in too much detail with on this recording, uh, I've definitely had a little bit more detailed conversations with, with some people that quickly on in the conversation, I identified that they were not at all happy with the service that they were receiving. So I said, hey, listen, you know what, those agreements are as good as the piece of paper you're written on. If you want to, what I would say is talk to the real estate agent if you're not happy. If they won't let you out, then talk to the broker. If the broker won't, then go ahead to the board. I can send you over Krebs phone number if you want, or Treb's phone number. <laughs> um, because yeah, if they're not happy, then then yeah, voice your concerns. But you know, I really can't take this any further and go and meet with you and give you advice other than if you're not happy to voice those opinions through these different outlets. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, not pushing us on them. But if if they are not represented in one end of their transaction, you are 100% open to talk about that end that they're not represented uh -huh. on. And if they are represented and express unhappiness and they would like right. to meet with the person that you're calling about, then yeah, we're okay with that too. You can't just say, well, your agent's probably terrible and you <laughs> should talk to our agent. You can't do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know, if anything, I'm like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. There's a lot of bad agents out there. But you know what I would do is I would probably talk to that agent or talk to the broker and and really talk about why you're not happy with them and see if you can get out of that. Um, so that's that's yeah. And if the time comes to continue on that conversation, and if the time comes where you decide to end that relationship, again, I'm not advising you, but if it goes that way, then I'd be very happy to connect you with somebody who is an expert in that area, and you'd probably have. Um, you know, the right questions, you know, the right questions to ask that person based on your experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, guys, just to end off on this, uh, there was some really good takeaways in terms of this process, uh, how to, how to really um, capitalize on some early, early dream stage uh, buyers that are really not wanting to meet with a real estate agent. They're probably frustrated with the amount of calls that we're getting. We know that this is happening in the market and we do need to set ourselves apart. Absolutely. People are going to remember how you made them feel, not necessarily exactly what you said. We know this, we know this, we know this. So if we make them feel 
like we understand their situation and we present this information by giving them value such as no problem i get it you're just at the very very early stages we want you to take your time and we appreciate that it does take time what we can do for you right now matter of fact what we're going to do for you right now is send you over a list of interview questions that you must ask when the time is right to be interviewing real estate agents. You know, for example, we also ask some of these same questions when we are evaluating who we allow onto our team. We only use very select specialized real estate agents that we choose to work with in very select areas, such as blah, 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 blah. Um, then we're also going to uh, send them an Eventbrite link. We also have a link or an event coming up with the five common things to avoid uh, or the five pitfalls first time buyers come into or whatever that is, Eventbrite link. Then what we need is we need some bios from you guys, very brief bios. If you don't know how to make a bio or you've never written a bio, must be written in third person. Google how to write a bio or funny bio templates for real estate agents. Just Google that. You'll find out templates. There's a lot of funny ones out there. And then we're going to need some sort of small snippet video bio from you guys. Uh, we're going to need to create a follow-up questionnaire after they have submitted to that Eventbrite link. We're also going to need pre-recorded Eventbrite links from each one of you guys if you see the value in creating a 12-minute presentation off of five pitfalls to avoid or five things to look forward to or three of this or 10 of that or whatever we want to do create that recording so we can push people to your event right link or don't it's up to you um and then we also need to create an opt-in for our newsletter and that newsletter is going to be a video summary of you guys analyzing the market watch report every single month that's going to go to your guys's opt-in email list that's the summary of the of the things that we need in the actionables after this takeaway anything we can add to that a uh, question about the interview guide. So who's going to generate that? I mean, where can we get it? Sure. We're the, already got, the one I've to already, send it, right? Yeah, I've already got a lot of those interview questions in my listing presentation. Um, you know, things that you should be asking a listing agent, which really, um, how this how this comes to light is like when you're talking to FISBOs, what I do is I over stimulate a for sale by owner's information overload so i'm like hey this is how to do a facebook post here's how to get instagram engagement here's to create exposure here's a budget they should be doing here's a price per click here's where to buy lock boxes when you're getting scheduled appointments these are the things to look out for also make sure that people are pre-qualified when they're coming to your house here's how to stage the home here's how to make sure that you get the best photos here's here's to do videos here's to do drone here's the 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 and they're like holy shit how much do you cost again yeah, I'd rather just hire you, I think, right? So the same kind of idea is that almost like overflow them with information. Here's information about what to avoid, things to things to look out for. It's almost like scaring them about how many different things can happen with how many bad real estate agents. So I have a lot of that information. Um, maybe me and Gary or maybe me and Lauren, we can put together some of these interview questions. Uh, and create a little bit of that template to send over to them. It can be pretty I think quick. I think that would be amazing. The other thing that I would think before I, I run to pick up my kid from school is um, if, Jarrett, you, you've got a lot of this stuff that you just rattle off, and Gary and, and I have done this as well for the different presentations, a buyer presentation, this, that, everything else. We should come up with a list of like five or six or whatever it is, different value props for these event bright things, and just do a casual, the three of us on a Zoom or whatever, walk through, run through of... This is what you do. Step one, you talk about, or just do a little presentation and then send it off to everybody and they can copy it in their own voice on their own video so that their face is being shown. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know what? I'm the more and more we're having these at the beginning of the, of the year, guys, the more that we create these templates and, and these tools for you guys to utilize, uh, it gets me more and more excited about doing it. So yes, absolutely. You're, you're hundred percent right. Yeah, All right, let's do that. Let's talk about scheduling for that. But I got to run right now, guys. Thanks for the value. Send me a copy of this because I got to, like Amal said, I got to take some notes on, on things that we were all talking about. Yep. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. All right, you guys. So we'll end it with that. Thanks, you guys. Good meeting. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.